The United States and Ireland share a centuries-old cultural bond, but is the war in Gaza threatening to unravel those ties? Hello and welcome to Roundtable. I'm Enda Brady. St. Patrick's Day is usually a time of celebration in Ireland. It's also when Irish politicians underscore the country's deep ties with the US. But many Irish people also identify closely with the Palestinian people's struggle to rid themselves of occupiers. As the US continues to back Israel's devastating war in Gaza, is the United States' Irish relationship coming under pressure. Roundtable's Jen Carswell travelled to the Irish capital, Dublin, to find out. This little green clover, a symbol that's come to represent Ireland, not only as a tourist souvenir, but as a global gesture of goodwill. This concept of presenting the bowl of shamrock became a symbolic gift from Ireland to uh, America every St. Patrick's Day, and it stuck. The tradition goes back to 1952. The US was angry with the Irish because of their neutral stance during World War II. The shamrock was the proverbial olive branch and helped to mend that rift and rekindle a long-held friendship. Because of the famine, or just in search of a better life, millions fled Ireland. Now, 10% of Americans say they have Irish heritage, and it's that shared history which has really cemented the bond between the two nations. Now, it's the war in Gaza that's causing controversy especially in the lead-up to St. Patrick's Day. I think were we to boycott the event, it would have much more impact. Obviously, it would have consequences for, you know, future invitations and all that. But I think, given what we're seeing in Gaza, that um, the, the situation is, is so serious that it warrants uh, an absolute boycott, in my opinion. The amount of people out protesting to call them for the ceasefire calling for the genocide to stop. I think, I think that just proves that the governments don't rep represent our, uh, their population on this issue. Many on social media also support a boycott, while on the streets of Dublin, there's a lot of scepticism about the visit. I think that the Prime Minister should probably be pushing a little bit, like give, putting a little pressure on the White House to actually do some right and for like the US to be on the right side of history for once. But having a seat at the table, many, including the Irish government, argue, is better than no seat at all. I think the Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has to show that he has articulated the Irish government's position to US President Joe Biden, with whom we have extremely good relations. Joe Biden constantly refers to himself as an Irish American. So relations with him are exceptionally strong. Uh, probably the strongest that there have been since, you know, even going back to, to, to John F. Kennedy. So it'll be important that Leo Varadkar shows, yes, we are friends, but friends have to deliver uncomfortable messages uh, at, at the same time. Whether or not the US listens is one thing, but the Irish public is watching. And it's been largely in support of Palestine. With an election to be scheduled in the next 12 months, what happens now may most impact Irish politicians when it comes to voting day. Jen Carswell, Roundtable, TRT World, Dublin. Well, I'm delighted to say joining me now is Dr. Jilan Waba Abdul Majid. She is the Palestinian ambassador to Ireland and she joins us from Dublin. Ambassador, a very warm welcome to Roundtable. Great to see you back here again. Just tell me, Thank you very much. how are you feeling seeing the Irish Taoiseach or Prime Minister Leo Varadkar traveling to the United States to shake hands with Joe Biden? Let me first um, say thank you for the for the um, uh, for this um, intervention and uh, for inviting me to be with you. Um, I would like to say that St. Patrick's Day is a very special occasion for the Irish people, whether in Ireland or in uh, diaspora. And every year, it's a tradition for the Irish people to travel, the Irish people, the Irish government, uh, to travel uh, around the globe. Um, and every every year there is like you know um, uh, this, the, uh, I mean they distribute the names of the ministers of the TDs and others like you know the deputies um, uh, of, of of the parties uh, and there is official list that goes. Uh, 
to the whole world. And of course, one of them is the United States. Usually as a diplomat, as a guest in this country, we respect the border lines for us, like, you know, to say opinions over like, you know, whether or uh, whether to go or not to go. But at the end, I mean, um, the Irish government decided that they will go to the United States and the Taoiseach will be meeting with uh, Mr. Biden. Uh, our message uh, to the Taoiseach, uh, to be taken to the United States is um, there is a just cause for the Palestinians. Uh, this, see, uh, this genocidal war must stop and um, there should be an end uh, to this uh, bloodshed against the Palestinian people and end the occupation and recognize the state of Palestine. These are the messages that... Um, that we send it, uh, I mean, to the to the to the United States through the Irish government. They already decided that it's a sovereign state. They took their decision, um, and um, as long as they are going, so we said that we will take um, the relation, the good relations between the American people and the Irish people, uh, to deliver the message uh, on behalf of the Palestinians. Ambassador, as you know, the Palestinian cause has huge support across Ireland. What are people saying to you when you're out and about in the street? What kind of feedback have you had from the Irish public? How they're feeling? They are a strong support of uh, of the Palestinians. They are really um, not only sympathize with the justice, uh, the just cause of the Palestinians. They know exactly how the Palestinians feel at the minute. They know what uh, what the Palestinian um, uh, endure uh, for for the past decades of uh, colonization and occupation, oppression. They know what's the starvation and famine. It's a war crime that you, that Israel is used now against against the Palestinian in Gaza. So they know exactly this shared history of colonization and oppression. It's very well perceived by the Irish people, and they know actually what's going on in Gaza. This this genocidal war that's live streamed on. Uh, on, I mean, uh, and everybody's around the world see what's going on. They know exactly uh, how the Palestinian, how uh, the suffering of the Palestinian people, and they perceived it in a very strong way that this bloodshed must end. The suffering of the Palestinian must end. And I always, wherever I go, um, I, I, I heard like you know this um, uh, supporting words, uh, like you know they 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 wanted just to hug you. Sometimes I mean today I was invited to a very a special occasion uh, of the International Women's Day, um, run by the trade unions. I, I mean the women, the females, they were crying uh, because they touch something that. Uh, like every mother, every woman, every female, uh, they know when I, I talk about uh, like the, the suffering of the Palestinian woman, they know what it is. They were crying. Uh, this is this kind of support that as well reflected on the, uh, I mean, on the street is still since the, fifth, the 7th of October, the Irish public goes every Saturday to protest in every county in Ireland. It's not only on Saturdays. There are small vigils and uh, uh, meetings around the, the, the Irish public, even during the week. So this support reflects uh, how, how really the Irish people know the suffering of the Palestinian and as well supporting justice and human rights. This is uh, a strong reflection of, of how they do understand and perceive the, 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 the history of the Palestinian people. Ambassador, if you were speaking to Joe Biden, what would you say to his face? It's the time for the Palestinians to enjoy freedom. It's the time for the Americans to have a goodwill to bring peace to the region. It's the time to recognize the state of Palestine. Let's meet our panel. Joining us from Toulouse in the south of France is Brendan Kieran brown He is Assistant Professor of Conflict Resolution at Trinity College Dublin. Also from Dublin, we have Betty Purcell. She's an author and member of the Ireland-Palestine Solidarity Campaign. And joining us from Belfast is Martin Rafferty. He's co-founder of BDS Belfast, that is the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement. A very warm welcome to Roundtable to all of you. Martin, I'll come to you first. We've seen your campaign group do extraordinary work over the last few months. Just tell us, what kind of message does it send that Irish political leaders 
are traipsing off to the White House to shake hands with President Biden this week? Well, I think the message it sends, what we try to do, we try to um, perform a, uh, provide a platform for people whose voices aren't being heard, the vast majority of the people of Ireland um, from day one, not just from October 7th, but from right, right, right back, you know, um, the Irish people have been totally opposed to the, um, the, the project, um, what's going on in Palestine. We're, we're also totally opposed to the, the position that the, the Irish government and, and also in the six counties that um, the administration here have taken in, in, re in respect to this, um, be it either giving political coverage, political coverage to um, the Israeli regime or <clears throat> in the north, providing actual um, the likes of the weapons and stuff that are being produced in the north um, that are sent over to to um, be used on the Palestinian people. And the Belfast story alone, there's, there's four um, factories churning out these um, weapons of mass destruction and and our political um, class to have don't say a thing about it, you know. So we 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 provide, we actually provide a, a platform for people to show the opposition, the um, the facilitation of the of the um, Israeli regime in Palestine. Betty, how strong is the feeling around Dublin? You're very active. You're out. You're talking to people all the time. Just give us an indication of the strength of feeling about this issue. Well, the Ireland-Palestine Solidarity Campaign, um, as our Palestinian uh, colleagues in the BDS movement are asking very strongly for no politician to go to the White House this year, given that the US regime is the main backer of Israel, not only giving them political cover, but also providing the arms for the bombing of civilians in Gaza and children in Gaza. So we're strongly of that view. And the Irish population are with us, um, as, as my colleague was saying there. I mean, we're getting 79% in the latest poll believe Israel is involved in a genocide. And we're getting 80 to 100,000 people every week at our protests out in the street in Dublin. So. That's the strength of feeling. And the feeling has been pushing the Irish government, who were reluctant to offer more than words of comfort to the Palestinian people. They are now making some moves. For instance, they uh, went out on a limb on the UNRWA issue, which has now become a leadership issue in terms of the EU and Canada. Um, and also they um, uh, have been pressurised by the Irish Solidarity campaign uh, into taking action with Spain against Israel's um, preferred status in terms of EU trade. But none of this is enough. We could now uh, implement uh, the Occupied Territories Bill, which would stop Ireland from trading with Israeli settlements immediately. We could recognise that Israel is an apartheid regime, which most Irish people do feel. And we could also back the South Africans in their brave and important case to the International Court of Justice. Brendan, just give us a look at the relationship between Ireland and the United States. You know, I'm Irish as you are. We know and we understand it. But just for, for an international audience, how far back does it go and why is it so important to both parties? Well, yeah, thanks for having me on. I mean, obviously it's, it's historical, it's embedded. Irish people have a long history of traveling to the United States, finding their way there and being involved in, uh, you know, uh, setting themselves up, finding a new way of life in the United States. And of course, Irish America has played a key role when it comes to sponsoring our own peace process here in Ireland and um, played a very important uh, non-partisan role uh, helping bring uh, our two our two um, communities together in the north of Ireland um, and, and really providing the space in which to to foster albeit an imperfect uh, peace that we have on this island and something that we don't take lightly of course and something that we can build on and it's because we are appreciative of that level of support and because we understand the significance of that, that we also very clearly and very directly ask our Irish political representatives not to go and inoculate the American regime, the American government, who are, as my colleagues have said on the panel, playing the key role in sponsoring this genocide against the Palestinian people 
what a strong message that would send by our government deciding that we cannot break bread and stand in the White House whenever this ongoing genocide takes place. So we appreciate very sincerely the role that Ireland and America and the friendship that we have. And that's why I believe we have a strong moral argument to pursue here. And I really don't believe that there's a uh, time is up. I still think the Irish government could make a very clear stance on this. Martin, the Irish Taoiseach, or Prime Minister Leo Varadkar, says it will be a mistake to boycott Biden and the White House. I see Mary Lou Macdonald from Sinn Féin is adamant that she wants to go so she can speak to him face to face about what's going on in Gaza. Do you think this sends the wrong message that Irish politicians could have done much more by staying at home and making it clear to the White House that your support of Israel is unacceptable to the people of Ireland? Absolutely. The only reason why the, the Irish political class are summoned over to the US at this time of year is to try to appeal to the Irish American vote in an election year. Um, the parties would have done better if they had went to Washington, but instead of going to the White House, stood shoulder to shoulder with the Palestinian activists in the US who are getting bombarded daily for their stance they're taking against their government. Um, and, and they're not only facilitating genocide, but being totally part of the genocide in Palestine. So we we have a long, long history here. You know, the, the politicians think they can hold their nose, go and do this, and then come back, and then not say everything's done. But there's a long memory here from our genocide, the so-called famine. And it was the Ottoman Empire who sent ships over to Ireland whenever the Irish people were getting denied the food that was here by the British to try to feed the Irish people. And that's ingrained in our memory. And it'll be ingrained in the memory of the Palestine and everyone else who is watching this. When maybe in 100, 200 years time, they'll be asking, what did you do during the genocide? And they'll be saying, well, actually the Irish political class went and had a banquet at the same time as people in Gaza were starving with the main man and his regime who were responsible for the, the genocide and starvation of the, of the Gaza people at this time. Betty, there is an election coming in Ireland this year. Do you think people will put some sort of a backlash in place when they come to vote, that they'll be so disgusted at the Irish political leaders having gone to see Biden and present him with the customary bowl of shamrock. Do you, do you predict a, a backlash at the polls? I do think so. I think that Irish people uh, feel very strongly about this issue and are very well aware and are seeing the pictures coming out of Gaza. Um, and also the, the latest, not just the assaults, the military assaults, but also the planned starvation of the, of the people of Gaza. So I think people are very angry and I think people will uh, take their revenge on the Irish government for a somewhat mealy-mouthed approach in terms of, um, you know, saying good things, but at the same time not uh, doing the uh, the actions that are required in terms of the urgency of uh, banning trade, for instance, um, with uh, the Israeli state. Um, I, I would say that um, I noted last week that um, uh, Mary Lou Macdonald of Sinn Féin made a strong statement when she was in uh, New York um, in terms of stopping the... Vi the the vicious assault against Gaza, calling for an immediate ceasefire and calling for the funders to stop funding the uh, genocide. So that is welcome, but it's not enough. We, we need the opposition to speak with the united voice, which they have been speaking in terms of an immediate ceasefire. And the Irish government has been in a way two steps behind the Irish people on this. And I think that um, people are very well aware Brendan, I want to show our viewers some footage that was filmed by BDS Belfast of an extraordinary mural. We're looking at these pictures now. It is artwork and the words of the Palestinian poet Rifat al who was killed by Israel. This is absolutely stunning what has been done here in Belfast and credit to everyone involved in this. It has gone viral on social media. Brendan, how... How deeply ingrained in the Irish psyche is support for the Palestinian cause? Well, yeah, it's massive. It's huge. I mean, when you think about it, Ireland knows all too well what it means to experience colonial violence. We understand what it's like 
to be forced from our homes. We understand forcible transfer. We understand starvation. We understand having our native laws and customs and language attacked by colonial oppressors. We are aware of that. And that's what gives us this natural empathy to stand with our brothers and sisters in solidarity in Palestine. And of course, we have a long uh, and proud history of, of, of doing that. You know, in the past, uh, there were armed resistance movements who um, broke bread together in Lebanon during a, a, that anti-colonial awakening in the 70s. Um, you know, so, so all of that is really important. I've spent the best part of 15 years of my life living in and working for Palestine. Um, and all of my Palestinian comrades are well aware of Ireland's history and Ireland's um, experience of brutal colonial violence. So it's no surprise whatsoever to me when I see murals of solidarity like what you've pointed out uh, on the Falls Road be painted like that. I mean, if you drive around Belfast and of course all across the island as well, uh, you see Palestinian flags flying, you see uh, murals of support. Um, so it doesn't surprise me whatsoever. And I was very, very privileged recently to be asked to give a a talk for the offshore island communities uh, off the west coast of Ireland, in Ishbofen and in the Iron Islands as well, just to show you how far the solidarity with the Palestinian people has reached. And I think that's really critical. Now, on saying that, of course, we mustn't rest on our laurels. We mustn't backslap. We must do all the hard on the ground graft and activist work like what uh, our, my colleagues are doing day in, day out, and, and make sure that we keep holding our government's feet to the fire when it comes to pushing our legitimate demands forward. Well, we've just said goodbye to Martin. So my next question goes to Betty. Betty, while Ireland's political leaders have headed off to the United States, People on the ground are still extremely active out there, boycotting products, in, in some cases, removing items from supermarket shelves that are connected to or produced by Israel. How important is that level of grassroots activism? It's very important. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing it all the time. Um, we uh, encourage um, our... Uh, activists to uh, be involved around the BDS demands and um, we do remove items from shelves. We do talk to managers in supermarkets. We do take actions at the like of uh, AXA um, and ask the credit union movement, for instance, to not ask uh, people to uh, get their insurance from AXA. We're boycotting HP. Um, we had a success with CRH which uh, we very actively pursued around BDS lines. And uh, we work all the time with the BDS movement internationally, and we take our leadership from them and uh, what they asked us to do. Um, and particularly, I would say, given that we're talking about Ireland-US uh, relationships, I mean, honestly, to the Irish-American people, um, I, I would say the strength of feeling here is incredibly uh, powerful and uh, no one will be thanked for for voting for uh, Joe Biden while he supports this uh, genocide. He's feeling it already in political terms in the States in terms of the uncommitted vote in Michigan and elsewhere. And I think he's going to be in real trouble unless he does a massive pivot. And even then, whether he can get the votes back, um, I think that he's going to be in real trouble because he has really been an absolute uh, supporter of the worst forms of, um, of, of genocide. Final question, Brendan. Um, Joe Biden plays up his Irishness and his heritage and ancestry. He's obviously very proud of his Irish links. Are Irish people proud of him now? Well, I'm not proud of him, and I'm an Irish person. I, I speak for myself. I'm sure Betty is not proud of him. I'm sure Martin, if he was still with us, wouldn't be proud of him. And I know that a lot of people are very, very disillusioned with um, him constantly putting forward his Irishness at this time because he's out of step. It doesn't map on to the way the Irish street feels when it comes to Palestine. And just to echo what Betty said there, I think this will be something that he feels very seriously at, at the next election. Um, and, you know, there was the opportunity to stop this. He did all he could 
to facilitate this genocide. He was there shaking hands and hugging and providing more and more and more military aid to Israel to carry this on. So Joe Biden, in my opinion, should not be viewed as a friend of Ireland. And in fact, we should do all we can to, uh, you know, remove our sense of connection to him. And when we're doing it, by the way, we could also look at uh, some other people, some other notable figures. What about Hillary Clinton, who is the vice chancellor of Queen's University, Belfast? Perhaps we might need to look at some of those relationships as well, because, um, you know, they also, she has also played a role in ensuring that this type of uh, activity goes on unchecked. So, yeah, Joe Biden, no, no, I'm no fan. Brendan, Betty and Martin, thank you all for your insight. Remember, you can see more discussion and debate on our YouTube channel. Search for Roundtable TRT World. And if you like what you see, please do hit that subscribe button. But for now, from me and Brady and all of the team here, goodbye and thank you for watching.